he wasn't big into crossword puzzles or you know things that were sedentary. Did you ever go hunting with him? I did. That was one of my best memories. Mm -hmm. So he took me pheasant hunting. I'm not a I'm not a hunter. I wasn't the best aim, obviously, um, because when I got the pheasant, I heard two shots, and I thought, wait a minute. You shot with me, didn't you? <laughs> you killed him and not me. Hi, I'm Rob Word. Welcome to A Word on Westerns. Today, we have a special treat because we have an author who's the granddaughter of the king of the cowboys. You know who I'm talking about, Roy Rogers. And that means her grandmother, well, she was the queen of the West. That's Dale Evans. So I'm introducing, give her a big round of applause, Julie Rogers Pamelia. Come on in, Julie. How are you? Great. Look at this nice outfit. Oh, you stepped on your grandma's boots. Oh, sorry, grandma. Yeah, they're, they're a little bit worn. She wore those for her TV show. She had tiny little feet. She did. I can put my feet in them, but I can't go anywhere because <laughs> it hurts so bad. These are special. Now, how many pair of boots did your grandmother have? Oh, my goodness. They lined the walls of the bedroom, but Grandpa had even more. So, uh, yeah, they wore, them. they wore them pretty hard, especially these. So. Well, they look comfortable. If you have well, they're not. Feet. <laughs> <laughs> there was no padding in them at all. I used to wear them when I'd go places uh, to, you know, talk about them. And um, I quit wearing them some years ago because these are five and a halfs, and I'm a six. And yeah, that, that's almost right. Yeah, no, almost, and it's just not quite right. <laughs> now I've seen some of your grandfather's interesting boots. He had boots to play golf in. He had bowling boots, specially made, I think. Yeah, he had all kinds of boots. I mean, the sky was the limit with boots. We just knew not to mess with them. We could play in their master bedroom, but we couldn't touch any of the boots that lined the walls. What else weren't you allowed to do? Oh, play on the pool table. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that, we knew that was off limits other than rolling the balls, mm -hmm. uh, but no cue sticks. Um, he was very, very uh, meticulous about his pool table, mm -hmm. and rightly so, you sure. know, with all these grandkids. Trigger, he went through several triggers. I know the first golden cloud that he bought that had been uh, Olivia de Havilland's horse in The Adventures of Robin Hood right. before his name was changed to Trigger. He saw several horses from Hutkin Stables. They supplied horses for the movies and uh, he, he was a second or third horse he got on and after he did he said oh, this is it. This is the one. And um, that was the, the trigger that was his I mean, they had a bond like nothing else. And there were other stunt doubles, obviously, because when they went on the road, that's a really hard thing to, to take a horse cross country in a, in a horse trailer. So, so touring uh, to do all the shows, he had a, a, a fake mm -hmm, Yeah, I know, I hate to break people's <laughs> bubbles. But, um, you know, Lone Ranger had doubles. Well, not for the Lone Ranger, well. Well, he did have doubles, Yeah, he too. did, but his horse had a double. Um, you know, the funny thing is Dawn Moore, um, Clayton Moore's daughter, um, we were talking the other day and it was funny because she said, you know, people mistake my grandfather for your grandfather all the time. I said, the same for me, because they'll say to me, oh, I loved your grandpa. He was the cowboy with the mask, right? I'd say, <laughs> um, no, that was the Lone Ranger. And then to her, they'd say, oh, I loved your, your dad and his horse Trigger. So I said, well, at least they're not asking us for angel tickets, because that was back when Gene Autry <laughs> was. <laughs> so. Well, when was the first time as a little girl that you realized that your grandfather was such an icon to people? You know, it's a funny thing. The fame is a funny thing. You don't see it from inside the family. The only time you really see it, in my opinion, because normal is whatever you're growing up with. It's just in my opinion, everybody's grandpa had a TV show. This was just my normal. <laughs> and um, it, you start to notice it when you get opinions from outside the family. And it was when I was in second grade, we had the Scholastic News today. Junior I'm a Scholastic? Teacher. She called me up to her desk and she said, Julie, do you know who this is? And I looked down and I saw grandpa on the cover and I didn't really think much of it, but I was more curious as to her response to it. Why is she acting so funny? 
she told the class and, and made a big deal about it. And when I went home that day, I said, why, why did my teacher do that? And that was kind of the beginning of me finding out, oh, not everybody's grandfather has a TV show. Um, this is different than, than some people. But like I said, they didn't treat themselves or act like they were, you know, anything great. Uh, well, they were so they were down much to more earth. into family. Yes, they were. Obviously, with uh, adopting and having kids, how many children did they have? They had nine, and that's a lot of laundry to do. Now, um, so your who was your mother or father? My dad was Tom Fox, and uh, Dale's Dale's son. only biological son from her first marriage. So he was a lot older than the other kids. What did your dad do? My dad was a musician, mm -hmm. and early on he had the potential to go, um, you know, make a career out of it in uh, whatever venue he wanted because he was very talented. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and my grandma, you know, could open all kinds of doors for him. She was a big band singer she before was, and he hooking could, up he, with Roy. Yeah, he could have totally done that. But he had a heart for kids and wanted to teach junior high school band and orchestra. God knows why, because I don't know who could, you know, it's hard enough to have junior high school students, but with an instrument in their hands, wow. So um, he did that, and he also was the pastor at their church, uh, the minister of music, because he had a heart for God. Mm -hmm. And that's what, um, what really drove him in, in his life. And he was just a wonderful man. And my grandma and him had an amazing relationship, even though he could have been really bitter and, you know, because mm -hmm. she passed him off in Hollywood as her brother for a while because mm -hmm. she was trying to make it in Hollywood. When did that end? When he went into the army, he had to write on his forms who his, who his mom was, who mm -hmm. his parent was. And when he put Dale Evans down, somebody uh, passed it to the press and got a hold of it. And uh, she was glad, though, because then her lie was you know, over, because mm -hmm. that went on for all through high school. That must have been tough to live with. It was tough, because he didn't want to lie. Mm -hmm. He he had, he just felt like it wasn't right. But he didn't want to criticize his mom openly. He just said, Mom, you do what you have to do, but I don't feel comfortable lying. So I'll just make myself scarce mm -hmm. when the press comes around. And had Dale already married Roy at that time when he was in high school? Um, grandma and Grandpa got together when he had just graduated high school and mm -hmm. he was, um, you know, starting off in So they college. still kept it a secret even after they got married? It was about that time, though, that he went into the Army the next mm -hmm. year, so he, it was, it was very close mm -hmm. in time. In fact, my parents' anniversary was only six months after theirs because mm -hmm. Grandma and Grandpa got married on New Year's Eve and my parents, it was July, so, yeah. So when Grandma got together with Grandpa, he had um, one Aunt Cheryl who was adopted because they didn't think they could have kids. Well then, as of course, what so often happens, then they went on to have two other biological kids. So then he had three. You're gonna get tested on this at the end, so pay attention. <laughs> I'm taking notes. So, so here's, there was here's my, the book. yeah, it's in there. <laughs> there was my dad and his three, and then they had four. Then they wanted to have more kids, and then they got pregnant with Robin and she had Down syndrome and, and severe heart problems, so she only lived to be just before two, two years old. And they were heartbroken, but they wanted more kids, but they didn't want to chance it again. So then they started adopting, you know, when they go to children's hospitals and, and places, they would, um, and orphanages, to greet the kids and encourage them, they started bringing kids home. Their friends would tease them. Every time you come home from a trip, you have another kid. <laughs> and um, they, they, were, um, they were a bit like, you know, at the time when Brad and Angelina were adopting kids from all over because, you know, um, at that time, it wasn't really a popular thing mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And I have aunts and uncles from all over. I had one from Scotland, Native American, my Aunt Dodie. I had um, one from Korea and um, my Aunt Debbie, and then I had two that had special needs, mm -hmm. so. Your grandmother had such a big heart, too. And yeah. she wrote books about it. She wrote 10 or 11 books, didn't she? Uh, 29. Oh, boy, I was a little <laughs> <Yeah>. off. <laughs> no. You're in the ballpark, you know. <laughs> no, and, gran lot. and Grandpa loved kids, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just, they really had a heart for kids, and that wasn't acting. 
I mean, they, they really did love mm -hmm. kids. They had a big heart. I remember when my wife was pregnant and we were at uh, Roy and Dale's 50th wedding anniversary and Laura was pregnant. Uh -huh. and we knew it was going to be a boy. And so Roy takes Laura under his arm and he pets her on the stomach and he goes, he's going to be a good cowboy. Aww. You know, it was like so great, <laughs> so wonderful. Yeah, he, you know. he really, he loved our kids and he would set them on his lap the great grandkids, which my son is a great grandchild, and then my grandchildren are great greats. So their mommy's daddy's mommy's daddy was day 11s. That's a, that's a tough one to say. So um, he'd set them on his lap and put his cowboy hat on them, and they would play and we'd take pictures. He called it the, the hat picture. He wanted to do a hat picture with all the great grandchildren. Well, he liked to play pool, he bowled, he was a, a hunter, he, a b real big sports person. Yeah, he didn't do anything like, uh, he wasn't big into crossword puzzles or, you know, things that were sedentary. Um, he was into fast cars, mm -hmm. which a lot of people didn't know, uh, and, and high-end cars. He had one of those um, amphibious cars he drove us into the water with, mm -hmm. and uh, from the beach into the, uh, the ocean, and that was quite something. Um, but he, he, everything was an outdoor sport. I don't think there was anything he couldn't do. Did you ever go hunting with him? I did. That was one of my best memories because uh, my grandparents asked me what I wanted for graduation from college. And um, I was taken back because I wasn't expecting them to give me anything. And I thought, well, you know, I could, you know, it could be anything. And I said, can I get back to you? So I called them back. I said, you know what? The times that I have spent with you have been like the best presents ever. Mm -hmm. So he took me pheasant hunting. Now, I'm not a pheasant hunting. I'm not a, I'm not a hunter. I, I don't really want to kill animals. But I knew that he was the most comfortable when he was doing something that he loved. Mm -hmm. And he was a hard person to talk to sometimes uh, because he was so shy. So um, he took me hunting. But before he did that, he took me out to the ranch to shoot clay pigeons. Mm -hmm. He had this huge box of like 200. Well, he gave me the, you know, spent a long time with the, the safety lessons and all the, you know, everything. And by the time I got to the clay pigeons, I missed 199 of them. <laughs> and I, I got one. One. Mm. And I was mortified. Well, and, the pheasants probably felt really well, safe. Well, they were probably, yeah, they were, they were good to go. But I crawled back into the car, into the truck, and I just said, Grandpa, I'm so embarrassed. I, I, I ruined all your box of clay pigeons, and I, I wasted your day. And I was looking down, and he didn't say anything. And I looked back up at him, and he was staring straight ahead because he was a little embarrassed to share his emotions. But he said, you know, it wasn't a wasted day. He said, I'm just glad you want to spend time with your old grandpa. Uh -huh. So it was, it was a good time. I was really glad that, um, that I had done that. And it was That's a great, great. great day. Now, I know he loved animals. Did you take dogs with you on the pheasant hunt? No, I'm afraid. I, he probably thought I was going to accidentally shoot him or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> I wasn't the best aim, obviously. Um, because when I got the pheasant, I heard two shots. And I went, did you hear that? That was two shots. He goes, no, I didn't hear that. And he was a little too excited. And I thought, wait a minute. You shot with me, didn't you? <laughs> you killed him and not me. Anyway, he, um, yeah, I know he did. And then he put him on my back in the, in the backpack. You know, the, if, if you go hunting I, I, hunting, I guess you know all about that. But um, he wasn't exactly dead. And about 10 minutes later, he flapped around in my back. I was like, he's alive, he's alive, do something. So what did he do? Well, I don't like to think about it, but the humane thing to do, he took it out of my backpack and turned away from me so he was behind me and he, um, oh, I hate even talking about this. Yes, he wrung the neck and stuck it back in my pocket. And I asked him later, what did you do? And he told me and I said, oh, that makes me feel so much better. Um, yeah, so. But I wouldn't have traded the time at all with him. And he trails to you until we meet again. Well, a lot of people know that your grandmother wrote the wonderful theme song, Happy Trails. I didn't know that. Well, there is going to be a test. I did not How know about that. A test for this girl, too. <laughs> no one told me that. No one in my family tells me anything. 
And um, I was 20 years old before I found out that my grandma wrote that because I was sitting in my dorm room and I heard it on the radio. I heard her name pop out, so I turned up the radio and, um, and it, they were saying, Dale Evans wrote that song. I said, I didn't know that. And I went and I called her and I was, um, I, Grandma, you wrote that? <laughs> and she was like, what, what? I said, happy trails. She said, well, yeah, baby, I, I just didn't think it was that important to tell you. And I'm like, she also wrote one that we used to sing every Sunday, Jesus Loves Me. Oh, she wrote the, um, yeah. actually the Bible tells me so, yeah. So she wrote, she wrote a lot of songs and wrote a lot of books. Mm -hmm. But the, the TV show, the Roy Rogers show, had already finished, yeah. hadn't it? Yeah, it had so just finished. So you never were able to go on location with them? Uh, no, we went that. on other locations with them when they, they taped other things. They did a lot of musical variety shows too, and uh, weren't you in one where, a Christmas one with Jonathan Oh Winters? my gosh, yes. <laughs> we, were, we, were, um, we were on the Dinosaur Show when I was three, and I don't remember it. Then we were on the Jonathan Winters Show when I was 10, I think I was 10. It was the whole family. It was a Christmas set. We were all, you know, instructed by the, you know, the director, okay, you do this, you do this, you're playing games on the floor. I was, you know, um, arranging the hearth with poinsettias and greenery, which was already arranged, and I thought, what am I supposed to be doing here, pretending I'm arranging it, but it's you know, already done. And so we all dutifully did our job, and, and when he called us in, he came in with his Viking hat, and he sat down, he said, kids, I want to tell you a story. And so we knew we were supposed to go to the, the rug, and, and he started telling this story. But I could hear down uh, behind us, there was this rustling going on, and I could hear running feet and stuff, and I thought, who is that? And lo and behold, it was my little cousin Rob, uh, and he was, he was three at the time. And he was running amok back, um, throwing things and, and packages and everything <laughs> behind us. And I thought, oh dear. Well, he picks up a ball and he just throws it as hard as he could. And it hit Jonathan Winters in the head. And the cameras are rolling. And this is a live audience. And it hit him in the head. His uh, Viking hat fell off. And he started improvising. The director kept saying, you know, like, keep rolling, keep rolling, this so is good. So that's in the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we, we didn't get to do it again. We were going to do two shows in front of a live audience. We were mad at him because the director said, great, I love that one. No need to come back. You can go home. It's like, go home? <laughs> Thanks, Rob. You know, so he's never really lived that one down. Yeah. Um, and Jonathan Winters saw Grandma several years, like maybe 10 years later, and he still remembered my cousin Rob, and he said, hey, Dale, how's that blankety-blank grandson of yours? <laughs> so tell us about the, the shows that you go to, the autograph shows you're invited to. I just go, uh, and I talk on panels, and I greet people, and I, uh, you know, just tell what it was like, because I guess a lot of people want to know what were they like in private, which is interesting, because they were the same on and off screen. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't, they weren't different people. They weren't playing characters. They were playing themselves. Well, and you've written a book too, haven't you, young lady? I have. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, there, oh. It's right here. Shocker, there it is. Up to my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, to my lifelong friend, Rob, thank you so much for your absolutely beautiful words. I wrote the foreword to this yes. lovely book. Yes. Thank you for asking. The book is a milestone for me and then you come in and make it perfect. Is that what I really wrote? Wow, no, <laughs> heartfelt love, most definitely. And then you say, happy trails. And of then course. in parentheses, written by my grandmother. I did not say that. Well, maybe not, you're I was making, close though. You're telling a big windy right now. That's what you're doing. But, so tell us about this book, how did that come about? Well, you know what, I, I had no intentions on being an author or writing a book. I wanted to, at some point, because you, you get to the age where you want your legacy, whatever that is, small or big, to be passed down to your children. And I knew that my kids hadn't really known much about my growing up. And I thought, I just want them to know, just to have it. So I was going to make a, like a homemade mom book for Christmas and give it to them for <laughs> Christmas. And the more I went to these Western festivals, they say, oh, you have such good stories, you need to write a book. And I'd say, well, I am writing a book actually, but it's for my sons. I have three sons and they're all um, adults now. And you taught them all how to read. 
I did, well, not personally, but you know. I like to think I had something to do with their bringing up. But anyway, they, um, uh, they would say, no, you need to publish it because we want to read those same stories. So kind of along the way, I heard it enough times that I thought, well, maybe I'll just do this for them, but then I'll get it published. And I ended up doing that, and here it is. So it, it kind of came through the back door. I wasn't really meaning to write a book, but I did. How's it doing? It's doing really well. Um, I encourage anybody that buys it off Amazon, if you love it, give it five stars. If you don't <laughs> like it, just go on your way. Four stars. You Four know. stars. <laughs> well, the name of the book is Your Heroes, My Grandparents, A Granddaughter's Love. Julie, a beautiful book. Thank you. And a nice forward, too. Yes. Well, I we'll wonder take who that did out. that. that. Be in no. Okay. <laughs> Maybe after the excitement's all over, I can... Well, think of some way to tell you how grateful I am. It's nice to be here, Sue. Well, I'm glad Roy asked me. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I am Rob Word, and I am in the Alabama Hills, just outside of Lone Pine, California. It's where Roy shot his very first movie. Roy, I'm talking about Roy Rogers. Well, he's the star of The Bells of Rosarita, done in 1945. And you know who he plays in this? He plays Roy Rogers, movie star. So is Roy playing himself also in this film? Are the Sons of the Pioneers and Dale Evans, Roy's wife, as... Nope, she's not playing Dale Evans. She's playing Sue, who in the story, her father has been killed. She runs a circus. She inherits a circus. But Grant Withers, who's always playing bad guys in movies, he's playing a bad guy in this one. In real life, he was married to Loretta Young. Well, she's not in this movie, but a lot of other people are. To help Sue get her circus back, who do you think he brings in to help? It's other Republic Western stars. So he's got Sunset Carson and Bob Livingston and Don Redberry and Wild Bill Elliott. What a crew. What a great team that's going to be. Plus in this movie, you've got Gabby Hayes. I know you're going to want to see this also as Dale's gal pal, the beautiful Adele Mara. A little bit later, Adele married Roy Huckins, the creator of Maverick and the producer of Rockford Files. That was later, though. In this movie with such a fabulous cast, who do you think gets second billing? It's Trigger, the smartest horse in the movie. Trigger gets second billing. Oh my goodness gracious, here I am in Lone Pine, and we're gonna start this movie, The Bells of Rosarito. That's what I hear right now. The bells are ringing. So let's start this movie right now, and we'll chat a little bit with Cheryl Rogers Barnett at the end of this film about her famous father. If you like it, leave us a comment. Join our posse on Patreon and subscribe. Well, you're probably already a subscriber right now. Let's saddle up with Roy on Trigger, second build and the smartest horse in the movies. Thanks for joining us.
sample of what you're going to see on the inside. The show was just starting. It's just commencing. The price of admission is 25 cents a quarter, one-fourth of a dollar. Now, don't go home and have to tell your friends and neighbors that you haven't seen the great, the famous 10 in one show featuring the famous Kai McKee dancing girls. How many, brother? Where's Slim Phillips? Slim Phillips is on the inside. Yeah. Folks, the show is just com Just a minute here, brother. Just a minute. If you're going to go on the inside, you'll have to have a ticket, Bob. Don't oh, bug me, Bob, you young whippersnapper. You tell him it's Gabby Whitaker from California. Gabby, you old son of a gun. Slim, you old rattlesnake. Doggone, Gabby, you haven't changed a bit. You're damn tootin' I ain't, and I'm just as full of fight as ever. What are you doing back here? Business. You remember Sue, don't you? Hello, Mr. Phillips. Not little Susie Farnham. <laughs> well, yes. you're all grown up. <laughs> Say, I was terribly sorry to hear about your father. What happened to the circus after he passed away? Well, it's in winter quarters now at the ranch. That's one of the reasons we're here, Slim. We need your help. Some place we can go and talk? Of course, right inside. You'll see also Moroccan moments, an exotic review participated in by real Moroccan women. That's enough for nothing now, folks. Don't be bashful. Step up and get your tickets right now. Of course I remember your father borrowing money from Ripley, but I also remember him paying it back. Well, we can't find no proof it was paid. Unless we do, Sue ain't got no circus, no ranch, no nothing. What's the matter, Unc? Oh, hello. Uh, my niece, Patty. This is Gabby Whitaker. I do, ma'am. Hello. And Sue Farnham. Hello, Patty. It's nice knowing you. Same here. Sue's father and I used to be partners. It's too bad you didn't stay partners. We wouldn't be in this fix. So you've got an idea. Pee-wee, how'd you like to go to California? California? You mean you might go back with us? Huh? Well, if I'm on the right track, we might have a surprise in store for this Mr. Ripley. This show closes here Saturday night anyway. Oh, on California, movie stars, cowboys, palm trees. Miss Sue Farnham. Yes. Telegram, miss. Thank you. Anything important? from Bill Ripley. He says he'll meet us at the station. Big hearted, ain't he? I've been thinking, Gabby. Maybe you better not tell Ripley why I'm here. I won't. Come to think of it, you didn't even tell me. How are you figuring on outsmarting that polecat, Slim? Well, I don't want to get Sue's hopes up until I'm sure, but I think we ought to be able to find that receipt somewhere. You know how Tom Farnham was about business. Probably didn't even have the payment recorded. Well, soon means look everywhere. Cancel, check. Paper. Ain't nothing like that around the place. I've just got a hunch that we'll find it in the safety deposit box that Tom and I had in the Cabrilla Bank. Hey, that's one place it might be. Can you still get in it? I think so. It was in both our names. Well, we can't get to the bank today. It'll be closed time we get in. Next stop, Cabrilla. It's a big place, isn't it, Mr. Ripley? You can't even see it all from here. <laughs> We didn't know anyone was on the road. 
Why didn't you stop traffic? Those riders might have killed someone. Ah, uh, get themselves killed, masquerading as bandits. I had a notion to reach my 45 like I did the Gabby, time... Gabby, you must tell them about it sometime. Don't think I won't. <laughs> well, you'll pardon me. We'll take it again, boys. Gee, that was pretty close. Is everybody all right? Oh, yes. We're just fine, thank you. Say, you're not Roy Rogers. That's right, ma'am. Oh, gee, I think you're wonderful, Mr. Rogers. I see all your pictures. Gee, the way you galloped in there and grabbed those horses. Oh, my <laughs> Well, I'm my glad gosh. nobody's hurt. <laughs> you know, you never can tell about accidents. Sometimes the shock sets in later. Now, if there's anything I can do, I'd Thank be Thank you, Mr. Rogers. We need you. I'll let you know. Should we go? Oh, gosh. Shake it up, Roy. They want to take it again. What do you think of that? I never even got her name. You never... Oh, my. Come on, or we'll never finish. Gabby, I wonder who put the tent up? I don't know. Well, uh... Oh, thanks for the lift, Bill. It's always a pleasure. You gonna be with us long, Mr. Phillips? Well, I can't say as yet. Well, anyway, I'll see you before you go. You probably will. Well, I'll be seeing you. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. We've rented the show to a movie outfit. Yeah, they're making a picture right here. Yeah, and we're all working in it. And who do you think the star is? Roy Rogers. Yeah, we figured you wouldn't mind. They're paying us pretty good. Gosh, what's the name of the picture? Bells of Rosarita. You ought to see that big Spanish set they built alongside the creek. Ah, them phony movie cowboys. Even muscling in on us here. Yeah, but they're finishing up today. That's why we're rehearsing. We've got to get the last scene in the picture. <laughs> oh, Gabby, I suppose it's all right. Oh, uh, this is Mr. Phillips and his niece, Patty. Oh, yeah. Hi, Patty. We'd better go in and clean up. We'll see you later. Come on okay. over and watch us act. Might do that. Bye. 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 What a gang. They all work for you? 
No, they're part of the family. Dad sort of adopted the kids one by one. Orphans? Every one of them. Their folks were all in show business with Dad. Do you remember Joey Long, the clown? And that little freckle-faced kid is his boy. The one on the end is Tommy Lewis. His folks did the high wire act, remember? Why, of course. I remember them. Say, you two have responsibilities. Yes, but they're a wonderful responsibility. Them little fellas run the place, like a boy's ranch. Any homeless kid's welcome. We figured they just ain't a bad American boy. That's right. All right, in a little bit. That's good. Now move that other reflector over. Hey, Lou, get it hotter on the doorway. Where'd that playback guy go? Get out of here, will you? Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all yours. We're ready. Okay. Places, please, everybody. Well, this is a surprise. Hello, Mr. Rogers. Hello, Miss... Uh... That's Sue Farnham, and I'm Patty Phillips. Gee, we're glad you met us. I mean, we're glad to meet you. We just came out here to watch. I hope you don't mind. We're tickled to death. Glad to have you. Now, Miss Farnham, if you... Come on, Roy. Uh, oh, hiya. Hello. Oh, uh, Mr. McDonald's yelling... Take his... it easy, Bob. We're having a barbecue tonight, and it sure would be swell if you could come over. Oh, sure. We'll be glad to, won't we, Sue? Well... That's I... fine. We'll be expecting you. All right, roll it. Action. fan, too, Rogers. That was a good scene. I'll have to see this picture. Oh, thanks. I hope you do. By the way, I understand one of your men said you were interested in some ranch property in this neighborhood. <laughs> well, I've always wanted a ranch. I thought while I was up here, I'd kind of look around. Well, I'm going to put this place on the market in a couple of weeks. Oh, is this your place? 
Well, practically, I'm going to take it over. Oh, now, now, Roy, what do you want with the ranch? You, 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 you know I'm allergic to horses, and besides, you've got a nice place already. Well, in case you're interested. Well, thanks. I'll think it over. Excuse me. Say, what did he mean about selling this place anyway? Gosh, I hope it ain't true. Well, Miss Farnham, you're not leaving, are you? I should say not. Roy, will you come? You know, I love that scene. You were wonderful, just wonderful. You were wonderful, too. Oh, I will. I mean, I was. Uh-huh. The way you galloped in there, oh, it was oh, just... Oh, shucks, that was nothing. In the first part of the picture, I have some swell scenes. I come right... See, I, now I come right down... Don't worry uh, about it, Bob. I, well, I will. Yes, I will. In the first part of the picture, I come riding into town, see? Mm -hmm. Now, the, uh, the heavy, that, that's the villain in the picture, has stolen the Borax works away from the girl. Now, the girl... Hey, Rogers, where are you going? The villain stole the Borax works. Oh, that's wonderful. And then what happened? Uh, it's up to me to get the Borax works back to the girl. Uh, couldn't we... Couldn't we go out and sit in the swing? I'm just dying to hear what happened next. Why, well, sure. That is, I'm... I guess so. Now, uh, where were we? Well, you were just about to get the works. I'm just about to get the works. I... I'm just about to get the works, so... <laughs> you still got them pictures? Yes, sir, right in my bag. I'll go and get them. Why, I've even got one of you, Gabby, without a hair on your face. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, boy. Say, Gabby, that Ripley fella don't own this place, does he? Oh. Of course not. Why do you say that? Well, he was telling Roy Rogers that he was going to own it pretty soon. He was trying to sell it to him. Oh, he was, eh? Well, kids, if that side winds up... Hello. Is... Look here, young fella. Don't go try selling something you don't own, and you ain't never going to own this here property. I wouldn't be too sure of that, old-timer. Looks like he means business. He's up to Sethin, all right. You mean he's gonna take the place away from us, Gabby? Oh, what are you talking about? Scat now, go on. Get out of here, the whole kit and caboodle of you. Play that guitar. How about a little jitterbug, boy? Come you went for it, Patty. There's nothing like the morning feeling fresh as the dew when you're going where the staters to behold. The cows are in the meadow and they give me the mood as I go singing down the road. 
My little dog is tagging right along at my heels. He's so happy that he's hopping like a toad. And Trigger, he's a prancing cause he knows how I feel as I go singing down the road. The sun is grand, my face is tan, and I'm so carefree and gay. And as I hike, I feel just like a school kid for a day. And when my day is over, there's a girl I'm to meet. You see, but that's another episode. My heart and I are stacking up a dream's kind of neat. As I go singing, singing down the road. What happened, Charlie? I got Mr. What's Phillips. What's the matter? What's, What's the trouble? matter? Charlie. Well, I didn't get a good look at him, but I was coming around the corner just as they were dragging him out of the house. I ran after him, but they started shooting. Come on, boys. Somebody's Jimmy this one. Same here. Let's get the horses. Come! Let's get the car started. Let's get the car. We'll never catch them now. We might if we get them before they reach the highway. Would anyone want to kidnap my uncle? I don't know, Patty. I can let the sheriff handle it. Yeah, might as well. Well, thanks for trying anyway, boys. Well, that's a serious charge, Sue. Bill Ripley ain't exactly the kidnapping type. I didn't say he did it, Sheriff, but he's the only one who had a motive. Well, if it'll make you feel any better, I'll have a talk with him. Thank you, sir. Shug, you sure they didn't get Gabby? Well, when Charlie saw him, they only had Mr. Phillips. If I only had Gabby here to talk to. I'm a shot. Oh, they got me. Somebody get a doctor. Look, I'm bleeding to death. Looks to me like strawberry jam. Yeah. Strawberry jam? Well, don't stand there like a bunch of idiots. Get me a handful of crackers. <laughs> I'll get them critters if it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> me, Gabby Whitaker, known as the killer of the Klondike, the rootinest, tootinest, shootinest wildcat of the West. Me, tied up by a... Who are they? Who? How do I know who? They snuck up behind me when I want looking. They ain't no two men alive. They ain't no five men alive, could hog tie Gabby Whitaker. Unless he was knocked unconscious when they done it. I remember the time I was holding a fort blown. There was 50 wild Indians around me. There I was, both guns blazing. I looked around... Look... Uh, uh. <laughs> Better snap it up, Roy. Crew's waiting for us. I was just thinking about last night, Bob. There's something funny about those men making off with Phillips. I wonder why they took him. Who knows? Whatever it was, it's none of our business. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Hello, young fellas. Come on in. Hello. Hi, Roy. Uh, hello, Jimmy. What can we do for you gentlemen? Oh, nothing. We just heard you were leaving and dropped over to say goodbye. Oh, gee, that's mighty nice of you. Well, bye, Roy. Oh, bye. Bye. So long, Eddie. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Tommy. So long, fellas. Is there anything else we can do for you? Well, uh, well it's, yes. Uh, 
We just wonder if you sing that song about Texas before you go. You mean now? Yes, sir, right now. All right. Get me a guitar, Bob. Gonna build a big fence around Texas, around Texas, way around Texas. Gonna build a big fence around Texas, so they can't steal my baby away. She's the lovin'est baby around Texas, around Texas, around Texas. And the fellas all know it in Texas, that's the reason I worry each day. Hello, hello, that's that lumber pile at high. Gonna build it to the sky. Big job to do, I know, but she's mighty sweet and so. Gonna build a big fence around Texas, around Texas, way around Texas. Gonna build a big fence around Texas, so they can't steal my baby away. Gonna build a big fence around Texas, around Texas, around Texas. Gonna build a big fence around Texas, so they can't steal your baby away. She's the loveliest baby around Texas. Around Texas, around Texas, and the fellas all know it in Texas. That's the reason you worry each day. She's got that Texas sunshine in her smile. Grill the cowboy, kill the cowboy. She's got those lone star moonbeams in her eyes. See what I'm up against? My troubles have just commenced. Well, thanks a lot, boys. That was fine. So long. Uh huh. I knew you were up to something. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long, fellas. Goodbye. What's on your minds, boys? Well, we've seen all your pictures, Roy. They are super. Especially that last one. Oh, you mean the one where I come crashing through the roof and I... Yeah, that's the one. That was sure swear where you go out and capture the guy who's trying to take the ranch away from the girl. Boy, if you hadn't come along, I guess you'd have lost the ranch, wouldn't she? Well, I guess you would, all right. Yeah, well, it's been nice seeing you fellas. Now, if you'll... Uh, uh, they're waiting for us downstairs, so if you... If We've been thinking, Roy. Well, come on out with it, Jimmy. Well, as long as you're already here, we was thinking maybe if you'd help Sue and us, she wouldn't lose her ranch, just like in the picture. But look, fellas, that's, uh, that's just in the picture. It's all make-believe. Roy and I are actors. We only save the ranch because, because the script says so. Now, if Hold it, Bob. You mean that somebody really is trying to take a ranch away from her? The ranch and the circus and everything. Roy, will you please? You boys run on back to the ranch. Bob and I will come up later. I don't know what we can do for you, but we'll sure try anyway. You mean you'll help? You mean you try to do something? Sure. Oh, gee, oh, yes, Roy. Well, thanks a million. See you later, bye, boys. Bye, bye. Bye. Now look what you've done. We've got to be heroes. What can we lose? I kind of like it. Yes, I could tell the way you looked at her. Oh, come on, Roy. Let's go home. You know I'm allergic to horses. You'll pull through all right. We better tell the gang not to wait for us. There was an old man named High Finnegan. He had whiskers on his chin again. The wind blew him off and the day grew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan began again. There was an old man named Michael Finnegan. He went fishing with the Finnegan. He caught a fish, but he dropped it in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan began again. There was an old man named Michael Finnegan. Climbed a tree and barked his shin again. He took off several yards of skin again. Poor old Michael Finnegan began again. There was an old man named Michael Finnegan. He grew fat and then grew thin again. And then he died and had to begin again.
news from Slim Phillips? I'm sorry, Sue, but we've been over every foot of the desert within 10 miles of here, and there isn't a trace of him. Sure beats me how he got swallowed up like that. Well, thank you anyway, Roy. I guess there just isn't much anyone can do. Mr. Raggy, I owe you an apology. Kids told me what you'd done, and now I know you ain't just a hero on the screen. You fellas will have me. I'd, I'd kind of like join up. Well, thanks, Gabby. We'd be glad to have you. You know, I'm a rootin', tootin', shootin' cowhand, and my trigger finger's just itching to get even with them varmints. Careful, Scotty. You'll tear that canvas. Ah, uh, what's the difference? We won't own it after this week. Is it as bad as that? I'm afraid it is, Roy. Sue, I wish you'd let me... Thank you, Roy. We'll pull through somehow. If these were the good old days, we could heist the big top up anywhere and make money enough to pay off that skunk Ripley. Why don't you? <laughs> these aren't the good old days. Well, then we had more than just a tent and a few props. We had a show to go with it. Big names, big acts. Say, could you have this tent up in Cabrilla by tomorrow night? What do you mean? I mean, could you be ready to put on a show if you had a show and someone to attract customers? Well, I don't... Gabby, what do you think? You're darn tootin' we could. We'll hold everything. Hello, operator. Could you get me the Republic Studios in North Hollywood, please? Republic. Oh, hello, Roy. Fine, thank you. Yes, they're all here except John Wayne. Yes, Don Barry's here. He's on stage 10. I, I can't ring there now. Oh, sure. Hold on, and I'll send a messenger. All right, Don. Let's try a rehearsal and uh, start it from that line. There's nothing more I can say. You want me to get a little suckle? Yeah, a little more tempo, please. Okay. All right. I think we can shoot it now. Can I talk to Mr. Berry, please? What, at a time like this? Hey, Mr. Berry, Roy Rogers is on the phone. He's calling long distance. Roy Rogers? Don! Be right with you, Eddie. Hello, on that long distance call, Don Berry is ready. Hello? Yeah, how are you, Roy? Sure, what's up? Well, I got a couple more scenes, then I'm gonna leave on my vacation. Uh-huh. Sure, I'd be glad to. All right, I'll get there as quick as I can. Hold it, Ferguson. Cut! Okay, boys, right over here. Oh, Sunset, telephone. It's Roy. Roy Rogers? Yeah, right over here. I think that he would... Uh... Yes? It's for you, Alan. Thanks. Yes? Oh, hello, Roy. No, I don't start for a couple of weeks. Sure. I'll be right up. Republic Studio, front gate. Oh, hello, Roy. Oh, Bob Livingston just left. He said he was on his way to his ranch. Yes, Roy, I'll see if I can catch him. Oh, George, see if you can catch Bob Livingston. He's on his way home. Right. Hello, George. What's the matter? Got a message for you, Bob. The office says it's important. Good. What's up? Read it. I guess the boys need some help. You're right. Say, Annie, uh, get me Bill Elliott's ranch, will you? That's fine. Now spin the rope. Spin it. Big spin. Big spin. Wow. Big spin. Come on, big spin. That's fine. Excuse me, Thunder, I'll answer the phone. Hello? Hello, Bill. Say, do you suppose you could get up here right away? Oh, fine. 
Get in touch with the casting office and have them send up some circus acts and a lot of equipment. I'll put Thunder in the trailer and leave right away. Come on, Thunder, we gotta help Roy. Oh, Sue, I don't know what to do. Keep your chin up, honey. Highway Patrol's been looking, too, and not a sign of them. No news of Phillips. Uh, that polecat Ripley's got him corralled summers. If I had my way, I wouldn't monkey with no law. I'd stick my 45 in his ribs and let him have it. We got trouble enough around here without this happening. Well, we've got the show ready, I guess. You think we can get any customers on this short notice? Pray to do it. When we get through dragging them bandwagons through town and telling them about all them western stars we got coming, why, we'll sell twice as many tickets we got seats. Hey, Shug, hurry up with that paint. Coming, Gabby. I wish you'd get busy and do a little work around this place. Oh, I can't do any work and poor Oscar on my mind. He ain't had a bite in two days. Keep your mind off that overgrown canary. And get out the painters and get them posters. Then I want you to start plastering up all over town. All right, but my heart ain't in it. Hey, look at this. Watch for a huge street parade. Say, isn't there some old city ordinance that prohibits circus parades? Yeah, I believe there is, now that you mention it. I'm pretty sure there is. Parade's about to start. Let's see now. Is everybody here? Yeah, everybody but Shug can't find him. Shug? He never is around when you want him. Shug! Hey, Shug! Oh, Shug! What in tarnation's wrong with you now? It's Oscar. What's the matter? He turned up his toes. You duck? He's dead? Dead on a doornail. Well, that's too bad, Shug, but you know the show must go on. Now you get up there with the rest of the fellas. I'm gonna miss that critter. Sure, sure you are. Sorry, Miss Farnham, but if you folks are planning on a street parade, you can't go through with it. We can't do what, Sheriff? Well, just a minute. Why can't we? Listen, Tom. We're going to put on a show, and we're going to put on a parade. That's the only way we can sell tickets. I know, but law is law. We have a town ordinance here that says circus parades are prohibited. Sheriff, don't you realize we've got to have a parade? And if we do decide to parade, who's going to stop us? I'm afraid you'll all be arrested if you try it, Mr. Rogers. I'm sorry, but I don't make the laws. Say, what's going on here? <laughs> what? We got an idea. When the circus came to town, all the clowns were tumbling down. The tigers roared, the lions looked bored, and the man in the back yelled, Peanut, lemonade, popcorn, and cracker jack, the prize in each and every pack. Oh, the monkey got away, grabbed the man by his toupee. The old folks smiled, the kids went wild, and the man in the back yelled, Bats gave us a fright. You closed your eyes and held me tight. Someone left, we turned to see. 
see The crowd was laughing at you and me But we didn't even care When they all began to stare We hugged and squeezed The elephant sneezed And the man in the back yelled Peanut, lemonade, popcorn and cracker jack The prize in each and every pack When the circus came to town Hold it, Rogers. What's the matter, Sheriff? You're all under arrest, Rogers. I told you there were no circus parades allowed in this town. Oh, but this isn't a circus parade. Then what do you call it? This here's a funeral procession. You're trying to be funny. Funeral procession? Who's dead? Poor Oscar. Back there in the bandwagon. I suppose you've got a burial certificate. Yes, sir. Signed and sealed by the doctor. Everything's in order. A duck. So you see, Sheriff, this isn't a circus parade after all. The only reason we were playing this kind of music is because, well, Oscar loved it so well. It was the poor critter's dying wish. He says to me just before he laid down, Gabby, he says, says he, no sad and sorrowful music when I'm gone. I want folks to be happy and gay-like. Them was his very words, Tom. So... Shall we go ahead with the burial ceremony? I better wait outside and keep watch? Nobody will be around. They're all up at the circus grounds. <coughs> Gonna be a sweet job trying to find a receipt in here. Never mind that. Check the trunk. I'll go through the desk. Gabby, a car looks familiar. Kind of looks like the one them fellas use when they snatch Phillips. Say, Gabby, how did you see it? You told me you were knocked out and hogtied. Who, me? Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Hey, somebody's coming. Hello. Hello there. We were just looking for you. How'd you know we was here? Went up to circus grounds, and they told us that, uh... I see. Hey, Rogers, wondered if you're still interested in the place. Heard you're gonna leave in a couple of days and thought we'd better drop down... Oh, this is Mr. Maxwell. Howdy. Hi. Hello there. As a matter of fact, Mr. Ripley, I have been thinking about this ranch. If you've got a couple of minutes, I'd like to talk to you about it. All the time in the world. Well, we're going in the house and pick up a couple of things. We'll be back in a minute. Right ahead. Roy, what are you talking about? You're not thinking of Bob. I've got a hunch they're up to something. When they leave here, they're a sense to talk about it. And you're going to listen in to what they have to say. How am I going to do that? Get into the back of the car and ride with them. <laughs> Roy, you've been seeing too many movies. Now, listen, Bob, I thought you wanted to help. Well, sure I want to help. Okay. I'll get him away from the car. Gabby, you give him a hand. The boys are getting their things together. Now, Mr. Ripley, what kind of a dealer are you prepared to offer? Well, I hadn't exactly set a price. I'd like to show you around. Well, let's go. Come on. Let me go, steady you, Bob. I'm more fit, I tell you. No, no. Roy wouldn't like it. And besides, this is a job for a young man. Well, I'm younger than I look. 
I got all the fire of flaming youth. Sorry, Gabby, I'm going to have to refuse you. You can't refuse me. Me, Gabby Whitaker, that stopped a herd of stampeding cattle all by myself. There was thousands of them coming right at me. In front of them was a wild bull. What do you suppose I'd done? What did you do, Gabby? I just stood there calm like and throwed the bull. You throw. Look, I got it. Look, look. I, 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 I'll choose you. Fair and square. Now, the one that gets the straw stays here. Look, Roy told me that I had to do it, and I'm going... I'm going to give you the best of it. I'm going to give you the first choice. Go ahead. Go on. Man gets straw stays. Gee, I didn't realize it was so late. I'm afraid we're going to have to make it another time. Suppose I get in touch with you in the morning. That'll be fine. All right. Well, see you in the morning, then. Thanks for coming over. I'll mention it. Hello, boss. Where you got him? He's out in the back, tied up. How long we got to keep this guy here? Till I find the paper I'm looking for. If this Phillips knows where it is, maybe we can make him talk. That's just what I don't want you to do. If he finds out why he was snatched, it'll tie me in with it. I've got to be kept out of this thing, understand? Sure, we understand, but what are you going to do with him after you find what you're looking for? I don't know yet, but all you got to worry about is keeping him here. I'll let you know later. That's the way you want it. some crooks around here. Yeah. How do you like that? You mean that all the time you were in the back end of that car, you didn't hear a thing? Well, I could hear the motor roaring. I can still hear that dad blame thing. You haven't any idea where they took you. Let him alone, Bob. You had no business letting him go in the first place. I asked you to go. I know, Roy, but, well, we drew straws for it, fair and square. Hey, there was one place where there must have been a 20-foot drop where I got this bump on my noggin. I'll bet that was the old dry wash. Yes, sir, that's the way they went. Well, let's go and see if we can pick up their trail. I ought to be able to do it. I can remember ever <laughs> bump. Well, 
Here are their tracks, all right. It looks like the tracks paid out here. Say, Gabby, do you remember if the car went straight ahead after you came through the wash, or did it make a turn? Oh, I couldn't say. I bounced around too darn much. Let's see now. I do remember a few minutes later, we must have passed close to a skunk. And I mean close. Fiend Huey. That ought to be an easy scent to pick up. Yeah, well, let's fan out and see what we can find. Here's our spot. Yeah, Critter's been here all right, and recently. Here's the tracks again. Hey, heading for that right yonder. This is it. The old mine shaft around the corner. Why in tarnation didn't I think of that before? Well, let's leave our horses here and go on foot. There may be trouble. Try shot through that window. Just for sight. Hold it, Gabby. If Phillips is in there, you might hit him. Well, we just can't stand around and see all the shooting one sided, can we? Well, we're just in time for supper anyway. They got a fire going in there. I was just noticing that. Did that in the picture once. <coughs> Sit down. Stay where you are. Hey, throw some water on that fire before we're all smoked out of here. Get out that barrel and fill it up, and don't try to get away. We got you covered. Come on, get a move on. Hold it, Stokes. He's going for water. haven't talked yet. And as far as the sheriff knows, it was just a kidnapping job. I did a little snooping around that circus tent, too. Phillips was talking to the girl, and from what I could make out, that receipt you're looking for is in the vault over at the bank. That means they'll be at the bank the first thing in the morning. Unless we, uh... Herdin' cowboy, hop on your pony, sing and ho. Start riding now, boy. We'll make San Antonio sing and ho. Long weary days and the dusty road to travel, but we'll make the boss pay for all this battle driving cattle. Light-hearted, carefree, trail herdin' cowboy, sing and ho. Keep moving, doggies. Time is a-wasting. Sing and hold. I'm not impressed.
occupation, but why don't you hasten, sing and hold? Helio, helio, you ought to know that a certain someone's waiting. You ought to know that to captivate and confiscate and arms will enfold this trail herding cowboy sing and hold. Helio, helio, one little doggie strayed from his mother sing and hold. Helio, helio. It's a nice looking brace of guns you got there, girl. The place is packed and we're still selling tickets. I don't know where we're going to put them all. Well, gee, that's swell. You don't know what this means to me. Maybe after the excitement's all over, I can, well, think of some way to tell you how grateful I am. It's nice to be here, Sue. Well, I'm glad Roy asked me. Looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. They've just blown the bank vault. There were about six of them. They shot one of the sheriff's men and took off cross country. Well, gang, if we were making a picture right here, it's for somebody to holler X. Let's well, go! Right. Right. Gabby, you get the show started and we'll be back as soon as we can. How do you know he'll be back? Come on, Gabby, it's time to start the show. They can't leave me behind. Get somebody else to start the show. I'll bring them back single-handed. Oh. Got the gas tank. Hey, look. We haven't a chance. Scatter. Let's take them, boys. They're racing. One to a man. with those blanks. All right, 
Come on out. We got you covered. Sorry I had to do that. As a rule, I'm a peace-loving man. Get out of here. Here's what I've been looking for. Come on, get up there on the horse. Here they are, Sheriff. Well, I'll be doggone. Say, Roy, this is just like one of your movies. Yeah, Roy, but your pictures always finish with music. Holy mackerel, the show. Come on, boys. Seat was somewhere. <laughs> All right, stand by, boys. Introducing tonight's biggest attraction, Republic's Great Western Stars. And here they come. Sunset Carson riding Silver, Don Barry riding Cyclone, Bob Livingston riding Shamrock. Lane riding Banner. Wild Bill Elliott riding Thunder. And Roy Rogers riding Trigger.
up as the cowboy princess, did you know you were a princess at the time, or did it just seem normal to you? It's one of those, I was so privileged to be adopted by dad and his wife Arlene, and she had very difficult pregnancy. So when she got pregnant with my sister Linda Lou, I started going to work with dad at Republic. I was like two and a half years old, and the wardrobe and the makeup department and everything, they were my babysitters. And I grew up literally all over the studio. So I got to watch them shooting, you know, films in New York and doing war movies and doing dad's movies and Gene's movies. And it was wonderful. Well, post-war at Republic was a, a really a busy, busy place. Oh, yeah. And your dad's films, after the war, the, the films directed especially by William Whitney. Yes. Those were so action-packed and almost verged on violence. They were, they were really strong films. Do you remember going on location for some of those? Oh, yeah. I got to work in one of them. I was in Trail of Robin Hood, which was one of those at Republic where they had all of the Republic heroes. So, A Christmas movie. Yes. Well, yeah, because they were dastardly fellows who stole Christmas trees from orphans. <laughs> they don't yeah. make them like I mean, that anymore. you know, how bad can you get? <laughs> <laughs> but that was an all-star film, too. It was. I got to uh, meet just some wonderful people, and I got to work with my hero, Alan Lane. You're the only one that he's a hero, too, I think. Um, <laughs> he was lovely to me. Well, <laughs> Uh, that's great, you know, and, and of course, Alan Rocky Lane was later the voice of uh, Mr. Ed, and he signed a contract that's saying, I do not want anybody to know that this is me. And of course, he made a mistake because that was the, probably oh, yeah. bigger than his films. Yeah, it, well, it's lasted longer than but, his films. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody says what a, I can't use the word because I've been told that it's G-rated here at the Autry. But he was a different or difficult sort of guy to work with. Mom said that he had been engaged to Carol Lombard before she married Gable, and that it broke his heart when she broke up with him, and he was never the same after that. Wow. <laughs> so that was Mom's reason. 